All right, welcome back to Cheap Horse Power, everyone. So this is what I'm working on today. Uh, I got my new sprocket for this setup. So I wanted to go ahead and show you what the part number was. There's part number. This is the bag it came in. So what you have to do is very, very minor mods. So as you can see, the hole in the center where the hub is supposed to align, it is just barely too big. <clears throat> so what I do with these is I run my angle grinder around this and I trim about a millimeter off around the entire thing as evenly as I possibly can. And then this thing just drops right down on it. Um, you literally just kind of shave it. You don't have to go very deep. You just barely shave it because it just barely doesn't fit. The next thing you can do is drill these holes out a little bit bigger. What that allows you to do is run a bigger, stronger bolt. Because as you can see, they're a little close. You can get away with the stock hardware and doing it this way. But it's also nice to have something a little bit stronger. So that's typically what I do. I have run these with the stock um, hardware before and uh, it works just fine, but it's nice to have that at a low level of security, especially if you go on higher horsepower. In this case, I'm gonna run a six and a half with some mods on it. So it's gonna be closer to 10 horsepower um, and it's gonna be a nice setup. So that's what I'm looking for. So that'll be the next step is just trimming this and I'll show you the results. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again and check this out. So um, the holes are looking really, really close now especially since I've done my trimming. I used my angle grinder and I just went around this. I'm actually gonna show you a little demo of what that looks like now. Let me put on my ear protection and I'll just lightly show you what I do. like that the reason why i do that is so this will go right into that little pocket that's right here it'll stop it from hopping up and going over so if you put it at a little bit of an angle it cuts in if you go flat what tends to happen is you don't realize it but you put enough pressure and it's just going to slide right over so when you go at an angle like this it allows that disc to travel around that circle without popping over this lip as much. Look at the fit that I have now. It's nice, snug, the way it should be, and it's hub-centric. All right, this is where an artist's touch comes into play. That's the rough cut before, and as you can see, it's kind of lopsided. What I do is I trim it, and even here I can see this is a high point. That's probably gonna come down a little bit and I'm just gonna follow that. But it, look at that. It came out really, really good for just eyeing it. That's all I did was eye it. I got another high point there. And look at that. I took out a lot of this cracked plastic and made it look pretty cool. All right, just so you can see my thought process here. That is really close. Maybe a little tiny bit more material. Some of you are probably like, oh man, it looks perfect. Uh, it, it does, it looks really good. But uh, you know, yeah, I think that'll be good enough. I really do. Uh, I don't wanna mess with it too much because I don't wanna break anything. I don't wanna accidentally hit the tire. So I think we're good. 
All right, so we get to my favorite part of all this. So I've been trimming all this down with an angle grinder. All the accessory stuff, that's all going away. So it's a nice clean frame like you would find on most other choppers. Now, uh, like real choppers, not these little mini ones. Now, this is a coup de gras tank, I like to say, because this is the big four liter tank. This isn't the cheap $20 tank. This is like double the price. It's like 45 bucks. But man, is it worth it? Look at the body line. Oh, it came out so good. Okay. So I'm really happy with how this tank fits the frame. That's my point of splurging a little bit and actually getting a decent tank. Because I wanted to see how it would fit the frame this time. I normally cheap out and I go with the cheaper tank. That's why I said what I said before too. It is cheap horsepower after all. But man, what a difference. Yep. I mean, and it fits the frame so perfect. I mean, look at that. Look at how it just hugs it. And it gives it a really, really nice chopper look. Because it, it is a chopper after all, right? It's got to look the part. It fills out the gap up here. It's wider. So it fits the look with the seat and everything much better uh, than one of the cheapo seats or <sighs> seats tanks but uh but yeah i'm really really happy with uh with going this route versus the other every now and then you got to spend a little bit more to just get that perfect appearance uh that you're going for now long story short on pricing i got this thing for 125 tanks 45 i'm going to start doing my calculations by the end of it this should be around a 200 dollars investment uh, maybe a little more um and I should be able to sell for around five, six hundred bucks. Um, so that's what I'm looking for on this thing. I'm going to finish up the paint and everything and get the motor all mounted up. But uh, this is this is coming along very, very nice. So I got a cheap trick for you. When in doubt, black it out. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing with the frame. I'm going to black out the frame just because it's easy. It covers really well. It'll fix this stuff. I'll probably do some minor masking on that just to keep this in this shape. And by the way, you can polish this by using these little brush wheels. They come back really, really nice. Gives it like a brushed aluminum type of feel. Um, it, it does give it like a nice finish. You can clean it up with like brake cleaner too. And also it works on me. So I'm just getting some of the rust down, I'm not fixing it. But believe it or not, the shock still works. And it will still work after I paint it black too. So that's the idea. I'm gonna paint it black so it looks nice. It'll look pretty cool. I'm gonna paint this black too. Um that's gonna be silver. But like I said, when in doubt, black it out. Um it's easiest, cheapest way to make it look nice and not go too crazy. And um, it's a neutral color, so everybody likes black, right? Um, that was Henry Ford's big thing way back in the day, right? Uh, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. Uh, well, that's how this is going to be. So uh, it's going to look nice. I'll dress it up and it'll hide a lot of imperfections. Well, all right, see what I mean about the black? Um, I do a glossy black, and the reason for that is it matches the tank. So if I can find it. So like I said, this gloss black, they really line up really, really well together. Um, nothing really blends as well as black does that i've found as far as mixing and matching pieces whether you're going gloss whether you're going satin it all just goes together really really well like even this will kind of look more shiny against the shine of the gloss chassis now you can go satin too satin really blends well and i've done a lot of mixing in the past where i've done like satin black or just off white you know uh not a full flat black and it goes with the chrome tanks really, really well. All the other chrome parts, all the other shiny parts, it all goes together really, really well. So 
it's nice to have the shine but it's also nice to do a little contrast sometimes where you can mix and match like a, a flat with a, a, a gloss and that can add depth and uh, and really change the whole appearance of the bike it's going to go really nice with the chrome i know that for sure so this was a nice easy just let's get it done you just got to focus and make sure you cover it really well so even little parts like this if i move that you see that a little bit of red under there so i'm gonna shoot that nice and clean even though there's definitely been spots if you look close enough where you can see imperfections but it hides it so well when you look from a distance it looks super clean that's the best way to get away with it this is the paint i'm using it's just a one stage paint one and done and really on this stuff this one shoots well enough to where one coat is good so once you get all the color out of it all the base color that was what you wanted to change to black you're good you're done this will be done this dries really fast the bars are over here i'm going to finish these up i just sprayed these like 10 minutes ago look at that just wanted to show you this other trick i did just by masking that one little line i was able to get some of this chrome and it looks really super clean super nice when you do little subtle details like that see what i mean chrome 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 or like the brushed aluminum look it's... all right i figured i'd show you this so i had to trim that puppy off uh, the reason for that is so the wheel could go in there without hitting the sprocket. The sprocket was about to hit this. It was protruding out about this far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this through. You put your spacer on this end. The wheel is going to go here. I'll show you now that. Now what I've done is I've kind of used this table to my advantage. I just let it tip forward and now it just holds itself where it needs to stay. This way I kind of have like a little bike rack, a little makeshift bike rack. Well, now that's looking good. It's all the way through, or almost. And I'm just going to finish it up with putting that puppy in there. Sorry, out of view there for a second. But take a look at the roller so far. I'm going to put the uh, handlebars up there, but look at the fender came out nice. Kind of looks funny. It's sort of... Almost looks backwards. I could like probably turn it around, maybe, and uh, and have it look like stock again, just not all cracked up. So maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Isn't that nice? We're doing the uh, the Bob Ross. Isn't that nice? Happy, happy little trees. Happy, happy little sprockets. Not hitting anything. Yep, just nice, beautiful little sprocket. Dude, this is looking great. I'm so happy. Um, I am taking this bar, which is already pre-existing. It was just on the opposite side. It sat over here, right? Well, now it's over here. So here's how I'm hooking this up without having to create anything. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this up. Now, this piece here, I'm going to flip this upside down. It's going to sit somewhere down here. And that's going to be more than fine. I've done this setup in the past. It works out great. I'll show you that when I'm finished with it. This is where that's going to mount. That's going to be really, really easy as well. I'm going to go ahead and finish that up now. I've got a little spacer in there. And uh, then, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. I'll let you see the finished product here. All can... right, so I figured I would show you this. I always assemble this just like this before I even put this on the splines. The reason why is I want it to line up well and I leave it on its loosest setting because of course you got a long way to go there. You want to be able to do that and adjust it. Now you want to kind of pull it tight a little bit so what i'm doing here is i'm pulling back this way and then put it on the splines all right so this is what i meant about this and it's so clean all i had to do was put in an m8 bolt put an m8 
nut on and a locking nut on the other side of this piece. And then do the same thing here. Uh, I actually put a little spacer in the middle of this one. Uh, but you can use a nut too. And then I just put a nut on the other side. And then hooked up the rest of the stock line. I didn't have to change a thing other than this. So I took this out, readjusted to where it's down here. And now when I hit this lovely pedal up here, the brakes work. And it's awesome. It actually uh, works really good. And you use the stuff that's already there, all the existing stuff. That's awesome. Uh, it saves you a lot of time and it looks really cool. The line goes up here and kind of hides itself in the body and you know it it looks really slick back here you know you don't really see it too much it's not really invasive all right so i figured i would show you this what i've done here is i've drilled two holes as you can see on every corner of the engine mount what i'm gonna do now it's not gonna be absolutely perfect but that's fine I'm going to take my angle grinder, my favorite tool, and I'm going to start making lines on each side. What that's going to do is that's going to open up all of this so I can go ahead and slide that engine forward if I need to to use it for chain tensioning. So that's going to be the goal there. Have this to where this is now an adjustable mount. Slide the engine forward, chain goes tighter. Slide it back, chain goes a little more loose. All right. Let's get All right, back. ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cheap Horsepower, and holy moly, she's running. She's also leaking some oil, as you can see there, and it's making a giant mess, but uh, running really good nonetheless. I'm gonna switch off the fuel. But, um, yeah, no leaks other than that. Um, and it's only leaking when it's running, really. And it's just coming from this portion of the head. So, yeah, I gotta tighten up the gasket or, or do something about that. But, um, other than that, I mean, the exhaust came out kind of cool. This is off a motorized uh, bike engine. So, it's kind of a cool exhaust. Obviously, I put my little slits in it. Um, to give it a little bit more of a like a, a, a gun barrel type of look um, All that's looking good feeling good as far as uh, chains and all that they're nice and tight um, I am gonna put a tensioner on the bottom. I think um, just to uh, You know have a little bit of adjustability there as the chain uh, Stretches I want to make sure that uh, you know, I keep good tension um, this is loosening up so i gotta i come up with a better solution for this but other than that the uh the bike came out exceptional um just like i all just came together so well the red looks good up there nice little honda engine it's the uh, gx 200 as you can probably read upside down you know so yeah great little motor um reason why i wanted to go uh um clear on this is so i can see the fuel flowing into it and next thing i gotta do to really finalize everything is put on my kill switch so i'm just gonna wire it up that'll be super duper easy to do and uh yeah we'll be in good shape here so i'll see you in the next one